Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reacting to our predictions for the 2019-2020 Premier League season, the longest Premier League season in history. And um, we're going to talk about each of the clubs that they got on as well. Um, so if you are new to our channel, smash that subscribe button, follow us on the socials, and let us know in the comments below what your what your predictions were, whether you were right or whether you were wrong. Right, let's go. Well then guys, let's start off with Norwich and work our way upwards in ascending order. Um, so Norwich, Watford, Bournemouth, they were the sides who were... Uh, Got relegated. Um, Norwich, well, I mean, they were, uh, in the end, they were far too open, weren't they? They seen 75 goals. Um, they, they had a decent start of the season. They beat Man City 3 2, famously at Carroll Road. Um, but, you know, conceded too many goals. But in terms of how they run as a club, I think they've done the right thing, but not overspending. And I think they'll be strong in the, in the Championship next season. What do you guys make of Norwich this season? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think Norwich. Yeah, they were they were one of my teams that I predicted to get relegated anyway. I think Norwich actually eighteenth. You yep. know, I think they've been promoted. They won the championship. They did well, but I, I just don't think they'll they'll stay out. Not quite strong enough for the Premier League at the moment, but I think they'd have taken that as a, like a parachute, sort of come in, go down, earn a bit of money, and and try and you know do well in the championship, like you said, Bill. And what about you, Lou? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think obviously the first game of the season will beat Man City. Um, you know, that's right early on was obviously sort of you, you think that that gives you know get them in good stead, but obviously it wasn't to be for the rest of the season. Um, and the thing is though, like you say as well, like, you know, the Championship now there's so much money in in that league as well. So it's a good opportunity for them to still you know make some decent money and hopefully sort of build build back up for the future because they've sort of been in and out, haven't they, for a while? So um, yeah, it's a it's a shame, but I think it's probably. They were definitely the weakest side this season, weren't they? By yeah. a long way. Definitely, yeah. So, uh, good luck to them for next season. So, uh, 19 for Watford. Um, you know, it's never a good sign when uh, a club sacks three managers in a season. Um, and unbelievably sacked Nigel Pearce from two games to go when they were above the relegation zone. And when he took over, they were in the drop zone and obviously beat Liverpool before lockdown. So, um, what was, was coming to you, Lou? I mean, um, there's such a yo-yo club. Watford and it's just I think the uh, second managers has finally caught up with them yeah it's, it's hard isn't it because it's like how do you build a philosophy how do you sort of keep the players happy in a good spirit to sort of keep fighting when you're changing things every couple of months you're changing the staff you're changing philosophies and things like that so uh, it's difficult for anyone to kind of come back from that I think and like you say they've had a good couple of runs you know a good couple of seasons so um, and you know to have good players like Troy Deeney and players like that in the squad as well you know it's quite um it's, I'm kind of quite sad to see him go down, but you know, the inconsistencies behind the pitch have obviously kind of reflected bad on it. So uh, it hasn't gone too well for them. Definitely. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, I think they lack the cojones. Waiting <laughs> hey. hey. for that. You've never <laughs> forgot that, have you? <laughs> well, I will say about Watford though. Just before lockdown, obviously they they stopped Liverpool being unbeaten, didn't they? So thank God. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we were happy <laughs> yes. with that. But um, I was a little bit shocked. They, you know, I, I would never have predicted Watford to go down. Um, yeah. You know, I'd have thought they'd have, you know, stayed up and, and done quite well. Like you said, Bill, they are definitely like a yo-yo team. But, they, you know, they've never, to me, they've always seemed like a good middle team, really. Um, so it was, it, it was a shame to see them go down. But uh, ultimately, just couldn't do enough. Yeah, and no, well... Um... Team finished 18th, Bournemouth. Uh, we're all fans of, you know, Bournemouth, the, the story, and, and Eddie Howe as well. Um, what, what a brilliant job he's done there. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the conceding the amount of goals they do each season, 60-plus um, goals they conceded every time they've played uh, in a, a Premier League season. It's caught up with them. Uh, and I think David Brooks being injured for most of the season um, didn't help their cause. Um, your thoughts, Lou, on, on Bournemouth? Yeah, again, it's a shame because, like we said, we've 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 talked privately about Eddie Howe, haven't we? That we really like him and and um, we like Bournemouth. So it is, a, it is a bit of a shame, really, that they're going down. Um, but like you say, that you know, if you concede sixty goals consecutively multiple seasons, then obviously there's a big issue, isn't there? Especially when the other top teams are strengthening. So if you're not addressing that at the back, you can't really do much, can you? If yeah, you, if they've proven. Sorry, sorry mate. no, sorry, mate. Yeah, just um, and also they haven't scored as many goals as they usually do. Like Josh King, Callum Wilson, obviously Brooks was injured, as I say. So if the goals dry up a little, a little bit more than usual, then you're going to suffer. What about you? Yeah. What were you, Stanton? 
I've, I've always thought that, you know, they play good football. I think you're right, Bill. You know, I think David Brooks' injury, you know, kind of sort of cost it. You cost it, you know, cost their place in the end. Well, in terms of the relegation predictions, lads, I mean, uh, you guys got one correct with Norwich. I got none, unfortunately. I'll come on to my uh, picks later. But, um, you know, I went with Brighton, Newcastle, Sheffield United. They all stayed out. So I got big fat zero from my relegation predictions. You got one point each. So well done, lads. Uh, hey. so, so, <laughs> so let's talk about um, Aston Villa. They finished 17th. They got promoted uh, uh, previous season. They stayed up uh, just on the last day. Um, you know, Jack Grealish, you know, the talisman captain. He got eight league goals, which is vital. They spent a lot of money and eventually they improved, uh, you know, especially defensively. They were woeful before lockdown, but they were much improved afterwards. Um, so, I mean, Ryan, Aston Villa were your surprise team. Um, I don't see them being like Wolves or anything like that, but yeah. I, I, I don't see them just staying up. Um, I don't think you quite win this surprise team <laughs> this season because they just stayed up. As you predicted, they would be comfortable, but even so, you must have been happy that they eventually did stay up. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, they weren't, in terms of surprise team, I certainly don't win that because I was expecting they might be in the top 10 or pushing, you know, for Europa League or something. That's what I thought. I just had this feeling that Villa could do it. But in the end, they technically were a surprise because, you know, I think it was given that they were going to get relegated in the end. I thought it was like... Yeah, they were written off, they? They were written off. So, so for them to sort of battle through, beat Arsenal and, you know, and then stay up at the end... That was a surprise, so it doesn't quite count, but yeah, you know, I was happy for him. And what, what about you, Lou? Yeah, do you know, I think, Bill, this season will be a good learning experience for them. I think it will show them about, you know, when you get a lot of money, like they did, obviously how to spend it a lot more wisely rather than kind of, you know, spending erroneously. Yeah, there's four um, directors left. Yeah, OK, yep, yep, well, there you go. So that'll be an interesting one for next season then as well. Um, and also... You know, I think that some of this might be pretty character building for them as well, because I imagine, you know, the press and things, especially probably in Birmingham and stuff, were probably quite harsh on them. And, um, you know, like they're, they're proud football in cities, always tough on their teams, aren't they? So I would imagine maybe this will be a good experience for them. And yeah, I think, you know, they just didn't spend wisely, like you said, Bill, sporting director's gone. So I think this will be a, will have been a good learning experience for them for being back in the premiership for the first time in a long time. So, you know, hopefully next year they'll come back stronger from it. Yeah, we'll see how they get on. So the next team, though, Bill, your team, West Ham. I mean, yeah, not a bad start to the season. I mean, I think we was all kind of... I mean, we spoke, didn't we, for the start of the season when we did our preview. Everyone was quite optimistic. Obviously, if you've been a West Ham fan, you know, I've got a little soft spot for West Ham because occasionally I go and see the games with you. I think Pellegrini coming in, I thought everyone went, bloody hell, this is just going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, not a bad start to the season. But then, obviously, when they lost to Crystal Palace, I said they just went on a terrible run, didn't they? That was it. And... I must admit, I was one of those neutrals, really, that thought they should give Pellegrini time because of his, his name and his, his calibre. But in the end, I, I don't think at the dressing room, I thought he was always going to... Uh, West Ham probably would have got relegated if they didn't get rid of him. And then David Moyes came back. Bit of a shock, I suppose, that he was coming back. But at, at, in the end, I think he... Um, you know, he did you proud, really. I mean, what do you think, Bill, as a West Ham fan? Yeah, no, I pretty much agree with every word you said. I mean, um, you know, when we lost to Palace, I think we were in the sixth, seventh at the, at the time. Um, but the, you know, the injury to Lucas Fabianski basically derailed our season. I mean, Roberto, the, you know, our reserve keeper, has got to be one of the worst goalkeepers in Premier League history. He was absolutely abysmal. Um, so, and he so what do you mean next time? <laughs> uh, I certainly will, mate. Uh, and he, yeah, we lost his points. And then the confidence in the players just, just drained. I um, mean, obviously being a home team to get older, Going to the London Stadium was uh, absolutely wretched. I mean, going to the pre-match events was quite nice, but the actual football was terrible. Uh, I did see some good football, but mainly from your position. So, um, <laughs> there was... Uh, no, it was chicken. Um, and as you say, David was come in and eventually, yeah, he, he did the job. Um, and especially after lockdown, I mean, likes of Mikel Antonio and our two Janney signings, Jared Bowen, Thomas Suchek, they really did us proud. Declan Rice as well, Hammer of the Year, rightly so. Um, so yeah, just uh, yeah, I think you're totally right, Ryan. If you Pellegrini stayed, I think we would have would have been relegated. But uh, it's silly for us to be 16th, you know. After you know, we had made some good business in the summer, but we should be nowhere near relegation. We shouldn't even be in 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 the fight. So I, we finished 10th the previous season. I, I would have settled for that, maybe 11th, 12th, something like that. But to be near the bottom for the most of the season is just it's a joke, really. So. 
much improvement needed for next season. Um, be interesting to see what obviously David Moyes does with the full pre-season under his belt. Um, so let's move on to Brian. They finished fifteenth. Um, I mean, Graham Potter, what a great job he's done there. Um, they only lost fifteen games, which is the least compared to the sides around them. I mean, he's uh, completely changed Brian's philosophy. You know, the more defensive mind under Chris Hute, and he's changed them into a, a team comfortable in possession. Um, and he's done well actually. Um, so. Uh, I mean, I, I thought they'd get relegated. Um, so did you, Lou. Um, based, I think for me, based on, I didn't think they'd, the players would adapt so quickly. Brighton, I think, I think they'll struggle. Um, I think they had a horrendous end to last season. They just yeah. about stayed up 17th. They sat Chris Hutton. Uh, is that what you think as well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, like, you know, when you're in that kind of the area they're in, uh, you know, I mean, they've always sort of been more of a mid-table sort of team, haven't they? And we knew some of the other teams coming in um, were obviously going to be hungry. Um, and I just had a feeling that, I don't know, that they, they might struggle with, with some of these new teams that, are, you know, are coming up and play, players that want to be, you know, higher up the table. So I just had a bit of a feeling that it would be a sort of tough, tough adjustment and the competition would be really strong around them. But hats off to Graham Potter, like you said, Bill, he did a great job. Um, and you know, against when you look at the teams around um, around Brighton in that area of the table, we clearly did a really good job to keep them up because there was some strong teams in that area. You know, and there wasn't sort of drastic amount of difference in a lot of the points, did they? So, uh, yeah, I think they could be proud of staying up, and it'd be interested to see what they do next year. Yeah, especially if they've signed Lalana as well, so that, that's a high good quality buy. player. If they could get add a couple more players of that ilk, I think they'll be in for a good season again. What about you? A lot of experience, isn't it? Yeah, what about you, Ryan? Yeah, I think they'll be proud of that season, really. Um, I never really predicted, you know, Brighton to do anything spectacular. Um, but I think if you look at it, really, the experience they've got now in the Premier League, I think they'd, they'd take that position. Yeah, no, 100%, mate. And I guess well, that need, leads us nicely into the next team, guys. So that's Crystal Palace. Um, I guess their season overall was solid. Not too much of a disappointment. Wouldn't really say they overachieved, would we? Um, no. Again, they didn't really have a, a good end to the season. Um, and from what we understand, they only scored 31 goals, which is the second worst in the league. So they're obviously missing, you know, firepower up top to kind of keep pushing them on up the leagues. I mean, yeah. what do you think about their season, Bill? Yeah, I think I think. Spot on what you said, I think it was solid but pretty unspectacular. Um, you know, I think as long as Roy Hodgson is in charge of Palace, I don't think they'll be relegated. Um, but, you know, as you say, firepower has been lacking for a couple of seasons now. It's not the same recent thing with Palace. So, um, you know, they're not going to push, you know, getting in the top 10 consistently unless they improve that. And obviously, they need to adapt if, if Saha eventually does leave. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah. One in the fight for relegation, but we're never really going to change for Europe. So um, I think they were glad the season finished because their their run after lockdown was awful. Um, so, um, but yeah, a, a solid season, nothing amazing. Yeah, I agree. Ryan. With both of yeah, completely agree. Nothing different to really add. I think they'd be happy roughly with what they've achieved, considering how poor the end of their season was. You know, so uh, at least they weren't, you know, fighting relegation or anything like that, really. So yeah, well, they've just got to learn from that and, and move on for next season. Yeah, definitely. And I guess that leads us into a team that I know you both have a bit of a soft spot for. I know you've both been to St oh, James's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great yeah. footballing club, the mighty Newcastle United. Another another um, poor relegation prediction for me, and and one from Ryan this time. Yeah, yeah, and they they wild, <laughs> they <laughs> they wildly exceeded your expectations, didn't they? A hundred percent. Well, uh, let let Ryan answer this one first. Yeah, well, go on, Ryan. We'll go. We'll jump to you straight away because we know you. you I, I, have a bit I, of I, I, yeah, I just thought no Rafa Benitez. I just thought it, they were just gonna drop and drop and drop, you know. And that's why I thought they'd get relegated. And, I think and, Newcastle. Um, I just can't see Steve Bruce motivating that team. Yeah. Um, and we can see there's loads of weaknesses now. I think it was a terrible decision to get you know, to not keep the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um He would have kept them up, in my opinion. But yeah, Steve Bruce in particular. I mean, you know, respectable manager. You know, done well. You know, did well with with Hull. Did okay with Wigan. Um, you know, but he was never going to be the man, in my opinion, to follow up Rafa Benitez. So that, that's why I thought they'd capitulate and, and drop and get relegated. But completely turn that around, and you know, with our predictions, Bill. 
you know, pardon the pun, we dropped the ball on that one, didn't we? <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's, no, I totally agree, man. I, I, I echo exactly what you said. I thought they'd missed the goals from, uh, you know, Solomon Rondon. And I usually pair who went Leicester and thought they'd be big shoes to fill. The players they had last season who did provide the goals, like um, Solomon Rondon, he's joined Benitez in China now. Um, and Jose Perez is at Leicester. So the two of their forwards who did score the goals, they're, 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 they've gone from the team. Yeah. So to even just replace them would be difficult. And they, they still would have just stayed up with, with the goals they but scored. But if you actually look at Newcastle, their XG for the like, expected points and stuff is really in the negative. But somehow they managed to get some results over like the beat Man, um, beat Man United at home, for example. So managed to just eke out enough points so if even if they did lose a few games in in a row, they had a bit of a buffer. So yeah, amazing to, for for them to get thirteenth. Um, and hats off to Steve Bruce. Fair play to him. Cool. I mean, the next team up would be Everton, and you know, and another season in which they've sacked the manager. So that was going to be you know how well would they do? The pressure's on in a way. Um, but you know they've got Carlo. Angelotti, I never thought he'd go to a team like Everton, not putting Everton down, but just you, you always see him, you know, with Bayern Munich and people like that, you know, and Chelsea. So, um, I mean, what's your thoughts, guys? Bill, what do you think about Everton this season? Yeah, I just think, um, again, you know, they've, they've hired um, another manager in the season, they've sacked another manager in the season. It just keeps, they're bouncing around like a pinball, their philosophy. I don't know what it is with Everton. They, they're spending a load of money. Um, and there's no strategy whatsoever. Um, you know, they improved when Ancelotti took over and with the players you can probably potentially attract. I think they'll do better next season. But I just don't see a real strategy with where Everton are meant to be going. Um, there should be a side getting in the top 10 comfortably every season. But they always seem to struggle getting a new manager and then they, um, they improve. So I think, um, yeah, I think Ancelotti, I think he'll, I think he'll do really well for them eventually. But um, they need to stick with him and buy the right calibre of players because um, they are weak in so many areas. Um, so, uh, I think, yeah, 12, yeah, it's a 12 support season, but, I mean, you know, I think they'll do better next season with, uh, with Ancelotti, with, uh, you know, his credential as a manager and the players he can attract. What about you, Lewis? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I do, I do want to make a point to just say how brilliant it is that, like, you know, again, no disrespect clubs that more mid-table are able to aff- attract managers like that in this day and age you know like proven yeah, it shows winners how much money level. they've got though Evan. it shows how much but they don't yeah. not spend it properly yeah <laughs> and I mean that seems to be a new thing doesn't it like the football philosophy seems to have changed in recent years the ones that have got it right early on seem to have excelled you know with these sporting directors and technical directors and all these different you know hierarchical sort of structures isn't it now it's a lot it's a lot different and we've seen a lot of teams have sort of lagged behind in moving over to, to models like that like even, even our club Arsenal have only in the last couple of years finally started to move into a new direction so um, you've got a world-class manager you've got some great players like Richarlison you know young talent um, yeah. I mean they could probably get good resale value if they sell players like that in the future but obviously they want to keep those sort of youngsters and build on it um, and even a couple of years ago I mean they were, they were bringing on players like De La Fay on loan weren't they as well you know young hot prospects Um so, uh, yeah, again, like you say, I mean, you'd always expect them to be like a seventh or an eighth, maybe pushing towards Europa League if it's going well. But um, yeah. Yeah. We'll see how they get on. So let's move on to Southampton, who finished 11th. And at the start of the season, no way did I think any of us think they'd finish 11th, especially after their, their you know, shocking 9 0 home defeats in less than October. I mean, Ralph Hasenhut, I mean, he looked, looked like Ryan was on the wall for him, but fair play to Southampton. They stuck with him give them a new contract and they've just paid dividends. They've actually done amazing the second half of the season. Despite having the second worst home record, they've got the third best away record and Danny Ings finished joint top scorer. Uh, sorry, um, joint second top scorer. So, um, yeah, a fantastic achievement in the end for Southampton. I mean, Lou, you thought they'd get relegated. And, and at yeah. start, like they, they would do. It just seems in recent years they've sort of lost their way a bit and things, you know, I think they're going to well, there's only so much you could sell and then buy great players and then sell. Yeah, well, you know, they're... it's a shame because they had all. They seem to have the facilities in place over a sustained period, don't they, to bring through talented yeah. talent. But uh, I think, yeah, I, I don't see anything about them this year that gives me confidence that that they're going to be able to compete when you've got. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. I mean, that, like, that, that's the um, you know uh, again, as you said, Bill. Like that, I just thought they might struggle again 
with the competition around them. And, um, you know, and then I was sort we were sort of being, well, I was sort of being proved right when obviously you're getting smashed nine nil and things, but hats off to them. Whatever happened to the, them, you know, going into the second half of the season, unbelievable. Um, and you think to have, a, you know, a player like Danny Ings, who, you know, has sort of been around for a while, is obviously still incredibly talented and a joint top for a team that shows how valuable he is. So, um, obviously, I think it'd be vital they keep him next year. And if they can get a couple of more players like that who can contribute, as well as he did, then they should be, you know, well on the way. Well, they've got to, yeah, cool. sorry, they've got to expand, haven't they? With, with teams like that, you you kind of want them to just add to it now, so they can they can try a little bit harder. But what a turnaround, like you said, you know, to start off in the relegation zone pretty much around October, shocking defeats, yeah. you know, like you said, second worst home record. But to turn that around and finish eleventh, I mean, I'd be unbelievable if I was a Southampton fan. So. Yeah, I think they might need to start holding their training sessions at St Mary's, I think, lads. Um, so, <laughs> let's um, move on to Burnley. We finished 10th for another solid season for Burnley. Um, you know, another another reason why Sean Dyche, what a, what a great job he's doing there. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it shows what a testament it is, how well he's doing there, that we're saying Burnley 10th and we're not even surprised. Um, <laughs> I, I dread to think what would happen to Burnley if, that, if he does move on. Um, but yeah, uh, what a what a great job as I say he's he's done there. What, what would you make, Lou? Yeah, again, uh, you actually sort of introduced me to the genius of Sean Dyche, Bill, on a couple of podcast interviews that he had with uh, um, Joey Barton, and that was really insightful. Uh, yeah. it sort of got a, you know, it sort of gives a good insight into why he is so successful. So um, yeah, again, fantastic manager. Whatever he's doing with that club, he's doing a great job, and he's, he's consistently achieving well, aren't they as well? So yeah. um, obviously, they want to keep him and keep building on it. And again, you know, they could comfortably be moving towards Europa League spots in a couple of years if they you know, strengthening the right places. They've got a manager who's got, you know, seems to really, really click with the players and the team that he's built. So, you know, fingers crossed for him. They can uh, keep building on it. Absolutely. What about you, Ryan? Oh, yeah. What a fantastic result for Burnley. I mean, I'm a big fan of Sean Dyche as well. I think really good. I mean, like you like you guys said, he's been on a lot of podcasts. I listened to the Joey Barton one as well, and I've seen him on others as well on YouTube. But it goes to show with results like that, just because he goes on a lot of podcasts, he's not all talk. Do you know what I mean? He actually gets the results as well. <laughs> <laughs> he can prove it, yeah. He can back up what he says. So, uh, full marks to him. And so, that leads us very nicely into Sheffield United. So, guys, what do we think? Chris Wilder and the players, how well have they done this season? Mate, absolutely unbelievable achievement. Obviously, Jurgen Klopp's my manager of the year, and rightly so, but Chris Wilder's got to be in the record in. Um, well, I, I, I stupidly thought they'd get relegated. So did you, Ryan. Um, and my other team. Um, yeah, I think Sheffield United as well. Yeah. Um, I just thought, I, I didn't think all the players would adapt so quickly to the Premier League, but, you know, they played the football like they did in the Championship with the overlap of full-backs and... You know, they had a number of players um, who, uh, who stepped up brilliantly. John Fleck, for example, obviously Dean Henderson, online from Man United in goal. Apart from the mistake against Liverpool at home, was absolutely brilliant for him. Uh, you know, they've got the fourth best defensive record in the league. So, um, outstanding achievement. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, obviously, me and Ryan thought they'd go down, but I'm pretty sure a lot of a lot of pundits, a lot of fans would have thought they'd go down as well. So, to finish ninth and be actually in contention for Europe for quite a lot, of the season, no, fair play to him. Yeah, I mean, that's, Ryan, that's incredible. I mean, to, to think, yeah, you and I, Bill, got it wrong there. Thought they were going to go down. And I think 20th, Sheffield United. I just yeah. I just can't see them have any any substance in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, suddenly finish ninth, top 10, you know, and fourth best defence, you know, record in the Premier League. That's, that's incredible, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, that's like you, could, you could never predict that. So, yeah, well happy with that for them. And guys, I mean, what do you think? I mean, you could argue, as you mentioned there, Bill, I mean, prior to lockdown, they were still in contention for, you know, like even almost top four even at some points. So, um, I mean, would, would ninth, I mean, ninth is still a, a massive achievement, but it, they sort of went on a bit of a downward spiral, didn't they, a bit after lockdown? It could have been even better. Well, yeah, I mean, I think lockdown come at a bad time for him, mate. Um, you know, if the season carried on, then I think they would have snuck a Europa League place. Um, but, yeah, I think 
I still yeah, finished ninth. Yeah, just unbelievable achievement. I think, you know, obviously they haven't got the higher quality players compared to, say, you know, maybe Wolves, Tottenham, Arsenal. So um, they're always going to drop eventually. But, yeah, finished ninth. Yeah, incredible achievement, as I say. Um, let's move on to eighth. Uh, Arsenal, your team, lads. Um, well, what a strange season for Arsenal. Obviously, starting the season with Unai Emery. Um, some iffy results. He gets the sack. Some improvement under Mikel Arteta. I mean, he uh, won the FA Cup against Chelsea. Um, but um, a very transitional season, lads. Um, I mean, we'll start with you, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit of a downer at first. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I predicted Arsenal to finish fourth, didn't I, this year? Yes, so, you did, boy. I mean, that's why I think Arsenal can. But don't get me wrong, I wouldn't be surprised if they finished fifth or sixth this year. I wouldn't be surprised because the defence could let them down. But because of... The, you know, the attack force now, I think we can go for top four. I think it is possible. Yeah. <laughs> Ever the optimist. <laughs> there, was, well, there was much more realistic with six. Yeah, that was that was me being optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at it as, do you know what, this is Unai Emery's next season. You know, I felt like he's probably had time to develop the team. I felt like managers need time. And, you know, although he didn't do wonders before, like the season before, don't get me wrong, he did pretty well in the Europa League, got us to the final, and that was a dreadful result anyway. But yeah. going forward, I just thought this would be his time where his players will gel more. They'll get used to playing from the back, etc. But it just didn't go to plan, did it? Arsenal were just absolutely dreadful, you know. Um, and then they sacked Sunai Emery, and then Arteta came in. Probably wouldn't have been my first choice. Um, but I'm so glad he is our manager now. He, he's fantastic. Really, really good. And Arsenal, if you go by Arteta, the, the start from now, you know, Arsenal have done incredible, you know, and have gone on to win the FA Cup as well. So considering how bad we were to finish eighth, yeah, we would like to have, you know, gone higher and maybe sixth or whatever or top four, but that was never going to be realistic. And we've still qualified in Europe and winning the FA Cup. So I'd say, yeah, we just got through the season in the end and I'm, I'm really optimistic for going forward as an Arsenal fan. Yeah. What about you, Lou? Yeah, um, I mean, I was sort of joking but serious at the same time when I said I thought six were being optimistic because I, get, I think for me, um, I, I mean, our season started to basically, you know, dive bomb at the end of, the fir at the end of Emery's first season. I thought after that Christmas period, uh, it just went, absolutely terrible and we had loads of bad results and you saw what was happening with the fan base kind of falling apart and then the Europa League final I think Arsenal sixth okay. um, obviously I'd like Arsenal to do well but I think for, for Emery this is his real test isn't it in that he's had a year now to start trying to put the way he wants to play in and seeing what players mm. work and what players don't work and all of that negativity just kind of carried across I don't think it, it did, never really got better did it so I think um it, it had to, you know, we had to make a change, especially with, you know, all the things with Xhaka that then started going on and the fan base and the players turning on each other. You know, it just started to go in the pot. Something yeah. had to change. Well, it's like Pepe not claiming confidence. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. As you famously told us, Bill, lack of confidence. Yeah. Um, so so I think he played, better, played better towards the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think so. I think when I predicted sick, I thought that was me being optimistic. Um, but I think... Since we have brought Arteta in, I am so much happier. Like I really, really think he's spe something special. Um, and there's lots of different, you know, sort of outside respective parties who sort of confirm that their theories about him. You know, and if you look at his season, he's had six months. He's delivered us a trophy and got us into Europe with, you know, the same squad that was pretty much bar a couple of players here and there that was, you know, going towards, you know, going downhill very fast at the sort of start of the season. So um, I think he's really turned it around. I love the way that he's turned our play around. We've even brought a little bit more of that vintage Arsenal passing game back as well, I think. So, um, you know, there's a lot more one touch going on just a little bit, you know, just kind of bringing in some of that stuff that we were known for as well, which I've been really impressed with. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, overall, I mean, obviously eighth isn't where we want to be clearly. Um, but I mean, I, I would actually take this season, you know, with a pinch of salt and say, I don't think it's been a disaster because I think we've now got the right man for the job who, you know, and I think he just needs to be backed correctly and he's going to bring us forward. So I think 
you know, a terrible season up until he came in. We've turned it around. We've won a trophy and we've got back into Europe, which we need for the money and to attract some of these bigger names. And um, I think next season's going to be the real first proper test. So hopefully, you know, next season will be a, a massive change for us. But uh, yeah, o- overall, not happy with the league position, but happy with where we're going from, from here on out. We'll see how he does next season. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so now we're going to move on to Wolves. And um, I think it's fair to say, guys, they've had another unbelievable season. Um, I mean, the last couple of years, you know, whatever their manager is doing over there, <laughs> he, they're doing something right and consistently being in, you know, th- these fantastic positions. So they've got the fifth best defensive record in the league as well, which kind of summarises while they're, while they're doing so well, as well as having a player who scored 17 goals. So, um, you know, they've seemed to have struck a balance of solid defensive performances, you know, cons- consistent goal scoring, you know, um, opportunities as well. So uh, if we go over to you, Ryan, I mean, what do you think of Wolves as, uh, as a team and their performance this season? Oh, fantastic, mate. Really, really good. I mean, like I say, last couple of years, they, they have been a machine, haven't they? And you are thinking, is that bubble going to burst? But, you know, to finish seventh, and like I say, fifth best defensive record in the Premier League, you know, really, really good. Um, I'd like to see them get stronger and stronger now. You know, I'll always be, I say, Arsenal would always be number one, but they're a team that you would like to see grow, and they've just got a fantastic manager who was linked with Arsenal. Um, so, yeah, I think they can only get better. And I, def- I definitely think as long as they have the backing and as long as they keep the management and they keep the positive energy and they don't slip, they could, in a couple of years, push for top four. Uh, yeah, Bill? No, I t- yeah, I totally agree, mate. Um, you know, built on a good defensive record, as you guys have said. I mean, Raheem, there's 17 Premier League goals. Um, you know, what a great player he is. Um it's not a surprise that he's been linked with a host of other clubs. Um, and I think the job Nuno Espirito Santo, yeah, I mean, absolutely fantastic. They finished seventh twice in a row is, is great, and especially as they've been in the Europa League as well. Um, you know, traditionally, you know, if you're in the Europa League, you'll drop a couple of league places, but they've stayed exactly as they are. So, and the improvement in a couple of players in particular, like Adama Traore as well, um, you know, when he was at Villa and Middlesbrough, he was known for his pace, but his end product was... Uh, uh, you know, inconsistent, to put it kindly, but he's um, he's really improved in, in that aspect and he's had a really good season. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, it wouldn't be surprised if, if Wolves are around seventh again next season as well. Um, let's move on now to uh, the top six. So, uh, Tottenham, they finished sixth. Um, in the end, it's a bit of a write off season for Spurs. Um, you know, obviously, sacked uh, Mauricio Pochettino. Brought in Jose Mourinho, and um, you know we all thought they'd finish in the top four this season. Um, me and Ryan thought they finished third, but um, it seemed that their league form from the end of end of last season um, sort of carried on into into the season just gone, hasn't it? What we'll, we'll go, you Lou? What do you feel, Spurs? Yeah, I mean, I'm, we'll go completely objectively, but it has been an absolute disaster of a season for them, hasn't it? It really has been te- terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like just like you say, obviously the league form continuing bad, and obviously you've, they've gone from Champions League finalists to you know just getting slaughtered in their matches in the league this year, and um, bringing obviously bringing Jose, you know you'd expect might give him a bit of a a bit of a lift. I think the interesting thing will be Spurs have got a, an Amazon documentary, the the one where Amazon follow you know the teams like the Man City one and things. So they've got that'll be, uh, that'll be a good watch, plenty to talk about. Exactly. So I think that would be a good insight to see what it was really like for them, you know, bringing in, in Jose. But um, yeah, I, th- I think, as you said, Bill, it's, a, it's been a right off season for them. They've not been where they want to be, obviously. And obviously, um, yeah, I think next year will be a big season. Is Jose the right man? Will he, is he going to, you know, achieve big with Spurs? Is he going to be backed by Daniel Levy? They're all big questions. We don't know yet. Especially, yeah, find out. yeah. so uh, yeah, we'll see what happens for Spurs. Yeah, I think... <laughs> Unlucky Spurs. They would like to have done better than that. And yeah, they were better than Arsenal in the league. But, you know, I think, to be honest, looking at it, I think... We still won a trophy. We still won a trophy indeed. Got to get that in. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It was a write-off season for Spurs. There's not really much Mourinho can do. So I think we can't really judge till the end of next season for Tottenham. Yeah, totally agree. So that brings us on to Leicester City, guys. Um, 
you know, I'm really happy with Leicester. I mean, especially when they won the league a few seasons ago. Uh, big surprise. But just slightly unlucky that they didn't make the Champions League this year. Um, I'd like to have thought that they would have got in the top four. And Brandon Rogers, let's be honest, guys, he, he's, he's done wonders for Leicester since he's come on board, hasn't he? You know, and they didn't go to Arsenal because he was linked to go there, didn't he? But they've stuck together. And I think Jamie Bardi, you know, been fantastic again with the age he is now. And he's, you know, what, how he's just over 30, isn't he now? So he's doing really Thanks, well. Bro. So, and he still feels like he's in his prime for him. So, yeah, I think they can still challenge for top four next season, but just very unlucky that they just missed the top four. I mean, what do you think, Bill? Yeah, well, they were um, they were my surprise team for this season. Um, it's fair to say I've won I've won that part of our predictions for this season. Um, so you, you changed Leicester from a counter attacking team to a bit more uncomfortable with the ball, which is uh, more of the modern style of play. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprised if they uh, yeah get seven for uh, or even get in the top six. Um, so yeah, I've, yeah. I mean, I thought they'd finish maybe seventh this season, but you know, for them to Finished fifth is a, a great achievement, and they probably should have been finishing the Champions League, lads. I mean, they were in, they were in third, fourth for quite a lot of the season, um, and as uh, you know, the Premier League really start, they were third, but they just uh, couldn't get going. A um, couple of injuries, you know, Ricardo Pereira, the right back, James, Man- James Madison got injured as well. Um, you know, Soinchu getting sent off against Bournemouth. Um, it just uh, just didn't go right for him, but it was in the hands and. Unfortunately, they uh, they blew it really, um, but still fifth fifth place is uh, um, you know very well done by you know Brendan Rodgers and, and the players. Um, and for them, it's I mean obviously they need to add to the squad, but they need to keep hold of players um, if they're going to go well again next season. But yeah, great great achievements to finish fifth though. And what about you, Lou? Yeah, I mean to be honest, like again. I'm, it's great to see them up there still because they are sort of that fairy tale story, aren't they, in modern football as well. So, uh, and like you said, Ryan, Jamie Vardy was outstanding again. Um, I, I think they'd be really disappointed not to finish. I mean, at some point they were third, weren't they? So, I mean, I think they'll be uh, really disappointed with that. To, I mean, we're not disappointed, but, you know, it's a shame because it just sort of didn't go right after lockdown, did it? They were still yeah. well up there in contention. So, um, yeah, it's kind of... Um, amazing achievement great season again I think they'll just be so gutted just to miss out on that Champions League because they were there for so long weren't yeah, they it was, um, it, it, I, it was in their hands wasn't it yeah, I just would have loved to see them in the Champions League again I really would have done I thought that would have been fantastic but I, again, think do well. I think they'll do well in the Europa League if they can keep their players I think they've got and obviously Brendan Rodgers great manager so I think they could go well in the Europa League if they, if they take it seriously enough yeah well fingers crossed hopefully it goes well for them and hopefully they can get there again next season absolutely we'll see they get on Okay, guys, so that brings us into the next team, Chelsea. So, uh, obviously, hats off to Frank Lampard. Done a great job, hasn't he? Coming in, you know, from Derby, you know, going into stepping up to the management position. Everyone thought, you know, what would he do? Obviously, with a restriction on transfers, etc. But to get in top four, I mean, two things. I mean, Lewis, they were your surprise team, Chelsea, and we all gave you so much banter, didn't we? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, I think Chelsea, they'd be very happy with that. And that just goes to show that Frank Lampard can, can build with that. And I don't think there's, don't get me wrong, I don't think they'll, at the moment, I know Abramovich has, a, has got a history of sacking managers and buying trophies, as I used to look at it, really, back in the day. And if you can't, you know, win at Champions Leagues and things like that, you're gone. But now, I, I don't think Chelsea kind of have that pressure at the moment. So it's a good position for Frank Lampard to be able to play with it. And see how he gets on, but to get in the top four, outstanding performance. I mean, Lou, again, your your surprise team. Hats off to you, my friend. I mean, what's your thoughts on the season? Yeah, I mean, I say I, I predicted third, and they they were joint. Well, they were fourth, but on goal difference, they were joint. Man, Man United and uh, Chelsea had sixty six points, so they you know it was just goal difference that separated them. But yeah, I think they had an amazing amazing season. I think my the reason I predicted them to do really well this year was Frank Lampard. So I actually think Chelsea thin finishing third would be a surprise thing for me because for me I think that's overachieving on what the consensus is. I think everyone expects them to finish sixth or lower maybe yeah. because they've lost their star players, 
There's no money to be invested. They've only got to make do with the kids that they've got. Yeah, and Lampard's inexperienced. Inexperienced manager. And I remember so. saying to you on our pre-season prediction, like just some of the stories I'd heard about him running with the team and that, you know, he's he's a Chelsea man through and through. You know, he's been raised at the club during their glory years. You know, he, he knows what it's like to win there and he obviously wants that for the for the players as well. Especially like, you know, Golden Era Mourinho as well. So I think he's from that ilk and uh, he, he wants to win. So I, I think... Um, Giving the academy players was a chance was fantastic. Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham were outstanding. Uh, Christian Pulisic as well. And I think a lot of people would have said before the season, you know, it would be very hard for them to replace Aiden Hazard as well, who, who you know, hasn't really gone his way at Madrid. But bringing in Pulisic and, you know, giving the, the youngsters, the academy players a run out, uh, been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think um, I think the reason why me and Ryan thought Chelsea would finish sixth was because they were a bit of an unknown for us. I didn't think all the um, academy players would play to a real high level immediately. Um, you know, guys you mentioned, Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount, I didn't think they'd um, adapt so quickly to the Premier League, especially Abraham, because, um, you know, when he was at Swansea, um, you know, I don't think he stood out particularly. But then again, Swansea were a poor side when he played with them. And Mason Mount hadn't had any Premier League experience whatsoever. Um, so I think for, for them two to do well and... And the other players still step up as well. I think, yeah, fair play to Lampard. He showed he's the right man for him. And I think next season, if they can get another centre back, possibly change the goalkeeper as well, because Kepa is, isn't a particularly good goalkeeper, um, then they could do could do well again next season. Um, but yeah, for them fish fourth, and you know possibly third, or, you know, worth a goal difference. Yeah, fair play to him and uh, good prediction. So uh, your uh, your um, your surprise team is correct as well. Yeah, we're, we're on a roll, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Bonus round. Um, well, I mean, I guess that leads us on to Man United, guys. And um, I guess, would it be fair to say it was a season of two halves? It seemed like uh, things weren't really going their way. And then they brought Bruno Fernandes in and everything changed for them. Um, I mean, if we go to you, Bill, I mean, what do you think? I mean, they finished third this year, obviously, which is a massive achievement. And it seems yeah. like pressure might have been on Oli until they brought in Fernandes and everything changed. Yeah, well, I thought they finished fourth. Um, May United to uh, improve on the social, I finished fourth. And then, um, I thought, you know, um, I quite like the business they did last summer with, um, you know, Dan James, Harry McGuire, Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Um, but yeah, as you say, I think the sign of Fernandez in, in January really changed their, se- changed their season. Um, you know, I remember watching Sky a lot, Super Sunday, Monday Night Football, the analysis with, you know, Neville, Carragher, Souness, etc. was, you know, is Ollie the right man? Did they do the right business in the summer? And now I think they've been vindicated. Um, like getting rid of Sanchez and Lukaku, etc. I think they've been vindicated, with it, especially the way Mason Greenwood's been playing. Um, and you know, I think ha- having Paul Pogba back as well. Um, he's played to a good level, especially since lockdown. And having Pogba and Fernandez in the same midfield is, you know, that's a you know really good partnership they were developing. And yeah, I mean the way Fernandez played um, with his goals, assists, and his, his passing. Pass it forward, which was really lacking at the start of the season. I think um, in the end, I think they've, the players and, and Ollie and the staff have done a good job. So, like Chelsea, they need to add a few more players if they're going to bridge the gap to City and Liverpool. But um, from where they were around sort of Christmas time, they were nowhere near their Champions League places. So for them to finish third, yeah, f- uh, good good, uh, good on them in the end. Yeah, I think we were seeing, like you said, Lou, first half the season not so good but then when they're coming back and obviously they're slowly slowly showing signs of the old Man United um, they're not quite there yet but I think it's, it's they're showing signs of optimism so for them to finish in the top four I mean I thought they were going to be within the top six so do you know what I mean that's an incredible season for Man United I mean I think they will be subtle challengers next year Absolutely, we'll see how they get on. So let's uh, round up with the top two then. So Man City, they finished second. Um, in the end, they were too inconsistent, especially at the back to challenge for the title. Uh, I think, you know, not replacing Vincent Company harmed them in the end. I mean, we all thought they'd win the league. Um, in the end, they finished 18 points adrift at Liverpool. Um, just, uh, you know, defensively, not been as good as Liverpool. And I think that's what's, uh, what's cost them. Um, so we'll go with you, Ryan. What were your thoughts on the City so far this season? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all shocked, really, how it all turned around. We all said Man City to win the league again. 
Same as you guys, I think you, you can't put it past Man City and Liverpool to be the top two. Yep. So I think Man City are going to win it again. Um, I just think they've got they're getting to that level where they've got that championship mentality. You know, they're they're becoming winners all the time yeah. every season. I think just because I thought you know Pep would want to try and go for that hat trick of trophies, really, um, and how amazing they were the season before. You know, winning all those domestic domestic trophies. So, uh, but too inconsistent really to challenge for the title. Um, and obviously, since Vincent Company had gone, they've not really replaced anyone. You know, a solid leader at the back, have they? So, no. I think they'll come back challenging, stronger next year. Um, but four marks to Liverpool at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Lou? Yeah, I mean, I can't really add too much more than what's already been said. Really, I mean, again, I predicted Man City to win the league this year. I thought, I, I thought it would be Liverpool that would actually be the ones that dropped away this year, yeah, and Man so City just to kind of pick it up but obviously we were wrong like you said they really missed a, a good leader at the back where they sort of conceded you know in games where they wouldn't have done as much last year, last season so um yeah it's a bit of a surprise so let's uh, finish our uh, our review with uh, liverpool champions of england for the first time in 30 years i mean thoroughly deserved um you know incredible achievement you know to finish 99 points 18 points clear of city um you know we all thought they finished second, and me personally, I thought you know, going so close last uh, the previous season, I think that might have knocked them, not their confidence. But I think they'll change City, but I think City will, will win by about seven or eight points. I don't think it'll be as close. Yeah, I don't think it'll be as close. Yeah, I'd love it to be close. Going to the last yeah. day again, I just can't see it personally. You know, fair play to them, despite not spending a huge amount in the in the window. Um, they just kept that momentum, like. Liverpool and City had as well with the ridiculous run uh, that they had with winning a load of matches in the row. They just kept on going. Lost only three games. Um, you know, great going forward as always. Defensively solid. Um, and yeah, just, uh, you know, fair, uh, you know, it, it completes the amazing job that Jürgen Klopp was brought in to do and he's, he's, he, and he's done it. So, um, absolutely incredible by him. Uh, what, about, what about you, Lou? I mean, sum up Liverpool season. Yeah, I mean, what can we say, guys? Unbelievable team, unbelievable manager, unbelievable season. It's probably got to be the greatest Premier League performance ever. I mean, I don't think that a league's been as competitive as this ever. You know, like the, the quality of teams and players they've got now, I just think they, they've been outstanding and absolutely head and shoulders above everyone. If it wasn't for Watford, they could have even beat the Invincible season. So, you know, it says everything you need to know in the modern era, doesn't it, as well? So, um, yes, yeah, thoroughly well-deserved, incredible I mean, what more can you say? You know, whatever Jurgen Klopp's done over there, you know, the, the team, they just seem to, they, they die for each other. You know, they really are just spectacular. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to them. It's, I don't think we can say anything more than, than, than every bit of praise imaginable for them this year. I think it's an unbelievable season. Yeah, definitely. For already just, I think Man City fans might have said 100 points team was better than this team. But we'll leave that for another day. Um, finally, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll leave that with you, Ryan. Last words, um, your thoughts on, on Liverpool's achievement. Just fantastic. I mean, there's no two ways about it. Klopp has become a god in Liverpool, hasn't he? You know, oh, yeah. he's just unreal. The way, after 30 years, you know, again, we're not Liverpool fans, but to see them win the league, I think we were happy for them to see them win like that. Um, just incredible. And, you know, just the way they play, you know, and the, the setback of, of missing out last season, it, you know, some people would, lose their confidence they came back stronger in fact I've got a friend who will try and get on a future garage football Rob uh, Rob Gray who's really into his football and he he said to me once he said you know this was last season he said Liverpool need to win the league this year because they'll never you know he doesn't think they'll ever come back stronger last year was going to be it for them and I kind of thought that's probably true but how wrong were we you know so full marks to Liverpool yeah I do agree you know the invincibles and the Man City, 100 points, and obviously the treble win in Man United, they're all up there. Um, you, you, that's a different debate, it's a different video, but certainly one of the best Premier League teams to win the championship, for sure. Absolutely, good way to finish. So, uh, well, guys, thanks for joining us. Um, we'll see you guys in another video. Um, so, thanks for watching in, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you are new to our channel, uh, smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, follow us on the social media. Uh, and let us know down below what your predictions were for the season, whether you were right and whether you were wrong. Um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.